busy. We're trying to figure out things to do so we can not go crazy, stay healthy, have a good time, and just make the best of this time at home with our families or whoever we happen to be with. So, Jodell, welcome. Thanks so Thank much you. for coming. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, my pleasure. So, Jodell, she's a, a health coach and she does stand up paddle boarding. But why don't, why don't you share a little bit about what you do and stand up pa paddle boarding? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, since about 2008, I got into it then. I've been teaching it through a company called Paddle Fit. And then I also have my own business, Get Fit with Jodell, which has taken me kind of all over the globe. Uh, teaching paddleboarding, but also teaching nutrition too. Not just nutrition for paddlers, but that is one thing, but also just nutrition and health in general. I've been in the health and fitness industry for about almost 20 years. Wow. So yeah, so it's my passion and I grew up in it. I was born into a fitness center. My mom owned a fitness center, so it's pretty much all I've known. It's in your blood, huh? Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> so life is, you know, a little bit different these days, right? None of us expected this and it kind of, to me, it kind of came out of nowhere. It's like, I heard about it and it's just like, okay, another virus, figured we all get through it and just kind of resumed a life, but I didn't see this coming. So I, I've had to make some adjustments. What have you and your family been doing just to stay healthy and stay fit during these times being under quarantine? Yeah, you know, at first it was like, um, everybody kind of took it took a step back and was like, wow, what's happening in our world? And then you kind of look around and go, okay, there, at first it was kind of like what's happening to us, but then you're like, what's happening to all of us? Like the whole world was going through the same thing. So there was some sort of weird, I don't know if you felt that there was some sort of weird comfort in knowing that no one was, was not going through that. So I felt like in a sense, it was kind of like this weird feeling that I was more connected to the world, but yet at the same time, it was kind of like we were all living in fear too. And I don't like mm. that feeling. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm very positive Polly. <laughs> so like, I'm very much an optimist. So I kind of looked at it like, okay, well, everybody's always wanting to stay home, you know, and get stuff done. And I see this as an opportunity to like, what do I want to tackle while I'm, while I've got this time to be at home with my family. Yeah. What a wonderful opportunity to spend more time with my daughter and, you know, get tackle some projects that have been ruminating in the back of my mind that I wanted to tackle. So honestly, I've, I've seen it as a really beautiful thing, almost like a really long, um, when we get breaks during the holidays or whatever uh, for from work, but a, a way to just kind of take a step back, reflect on our life and go, where was I kind of out of balance and how can I take the time necessary now to remedy that? So I've made some changes in my own business, such as I, I had about almost 5,000 followers on Facebook and I was so over being on social media that I kind of deleted my account um, wow. on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> um, because it was always in the back of my mind, I got to post, I got to let people know about my business, I got to yeah, you know, put sure. my name out there. And I just didn't want that stress. I wanted more of my energy. You know, I kind of sat and thought about, I want more of my energy to be focused on how's my daughter? What does she need from me? You know, those thoughts were being overridden by my business. And that's yeah. how I found it. You know, our thoughts should be really be geared toward how is my family doing? How is my village, the people around me? Do Could I be more to them? You know, so that was... That was something that I started working on. And then also um, on a physical level, I decided there was a project in my backyard I wanted to do that would also help me stay really active. And I'm a big outdoors person. You can't kind of keep me indoors most of the time being a paddler and stuff. Yeah, good for but you. But aside from paddling, because we're just now coming into the warmer season to be out there more, um, I'm a big hiker. And I have about 32 acres behind my house that I'd been working. Oh, lucky you. That's awesome. Build, <laughs> build my own hiking trail. And so my husband and I set out and we mapped out where we wanted to build our little hiking trail. So I started working on it. I took a pair of, I call them nippers, but I think they're like bushwhack cut. They look like big scissors. So I took okay. those and I took a pickaxe. You, you don't have um, a machete like, or anything? I have a Pulaski or a pickaxe and then I have okay. a rake. And so I would just like hoe the ground and like get all the rocks out and make the path. So it's been a very slow day by day process. 
Yeah. But in a sense, when I've been down there in the woods doing that, it's kind of like a metaphor for life. It's like take some time, step back, reprioritize, reflect on where your path has been going, and now take little steps in the right direction of where they should be going mm. to make your dreams come true or to make your life better, whatever you are looking for, instead of um, – the mundane, I guess, like it is cool that we have careers and it is cool that we're doing things in the world that, you know, gives us monetary value. But at the end of your life, nobody goes to your funeral and says, Hey, Joe Dow. I just, uh, Joe Dell, I, I lost you. Hey, stand by, folks. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get uh, Joe Dell back here. Not sure what happened to our, uh, to our feed. Just stand by. Okay, so I'm just going to hang out and wait for Jodell. Hopefully she uh, she gets back soon. Must She must be having some kind of uh, internet challenges. But uh, she brought up some great points on reflection. Here we go. Looks like she's back. Looks like she's trying to come back. All right, Jodell, I'm trying to bring you on if you can hear me. For some reason. Some reason I lost you. All right, standing by. And if you're watching live, just uh, you can spend this time in reflection. Also, since this is live, you should be able to ask some questions too so feel free to type in questions all right looks like jodell is back hey i lost you for a sec well, <laughs> i know i have no idea what happened so my internet here quit working so i'm using my hotspot. so <laughs> okay that should be yeah so, so you're talking about your you're, you're building your trail and you know you mentioned reflection a couple times and it's been Reflection has been super key for me too. So I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. And, you know, for me, I definitely uh, kind of um, realized some things that I need to work on on myself. So it's uh, definitely been some opportunities for growth. And it's it's been a really unique time spending this extra time at home. So anyway, back, back to you and, and back to your trail. You're, you're clearing a little bit each day. You've got your, your rock and your, your rake and your pickaxe. And your scissors <laughs> yeah so it was just to me every every time i'm down in the woods that's that's uh healing for me the woods nature's really healing and so i think that's another thing that people have benefited from this time you know you almost can only watch so much netflix before you have to go outside <laughs> you know and or at least that's what people are feeling i'm not a tv watcher because i don't have the i have too much anxiety for that but the woods takes that away nature takes that away grounding takes that away i mean that's why i became a paddler because it got me out in nature it got me yeah. on the water which i love water too 
And but that's the kind of the cool thing about the times we're living in right now. Um, we have the availability to try new things. We have the availability to, like you said, and like I've been saying, reflect and see um, how much am I spending indoors versus outdoors because humans are outdoor creatures. We're not made for the indoors. So the more we can make choices in the right direction to, you know, how, how can I be outside that fits my lifestyle? What things do I want to do? We, you are going to see improved health just by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's come out recently. A lot of us have known this for a long time, but it's getting more press that UV light from the sun is antiviral. Mm. It kills COVID-19. Right. It activates your immune system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. One of the best things you can do is just get your butt outside, pull yourself away from the TV. And, you know, speaking of Netflix, I remember just kind of like a really low point in my life. It was, um, I was going through my divorce and I was just really bummed and I was kind of playing the victim and I spent so much time on Netflix. And the more time I spent on there, the worse I felt about myself. And the first couple of shows might feel like a distraction. It takes your mind off things, but it doesn't force you to, to reflect on what's going on in your life. And it doesn't help you help you heal. But there's something magical about being outside, going in nature, working on a, a project. And I mean, talk about a project, making your own hiking trail. <laughs> Every time I go hiking, I'm just like, holy cow, this must have been like so much work building yeah. the trail. So are you guys like clearing trees and stuff too? And Yeah, so we're pretty simple folk. I mean, we live in a shop house that's just on, it happens to be on 32 acres um, that we hadn't done anything with, but we bought the land specifically to do this little project. And so now we had the time. Um, it's a huge decline. It's not a flat. Mm -hmm land okay. so we're zigzagging the trail and hopefully we'll get you know two to three miles out of it if we're lucky so wow so how much progress have you made so far i'm a mile in so mile that in, means okay. we can go a mile in and come a mile out and so I've so the trail, the trail back is going to be a different trail so that's like actually four to six miles of trail yeah yeah well it'll be wow. it'll go to the end to the river there's a creek at the bottom of our property so it'll go to there you go to the creek and then you come back up so but yeah, I mean, it's uh, hiking is one of the best things you can do for fitness, you know, and it's it's a way to like kill three birds with one stone. You get fitness, you get fresh air, which is so essential to our health, too. I mean, that's why they're allowing us to have physical outdoor activity. And you do get vitamin D because you're in the sunshine, even when you're in the shade of trees, you're still getting it through the shade, like through some of the light coming, filtering through the trees. But then also um, you're getting reflective, like it reflects even off water and stuff back at you. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah 100 percent. I have a friend who's who's of Scottish descent. He's very pale <laughs> and the kid, he can get sunburned in the shade. Oh, sure. Yeah. Of just what you said, because sunlight is unpolarized it goes in all directions mm -hmm. so even if you're in the forest under trees you're still getting the different frequencies of sunlight so yeah, yeah. and then um have you heard of green odor no there's like this research study out of japan a green odor is just emitted by plant life okay and it um i forget the details but it activates the parasympathetic nervous system it decreases cortisol but it has a very relaxing effect on biology on our biology so just being out there amongst the trees and plants and this time of year is so beautiful because everything's just coming alive again right yeah got bugs everywhere and flowers and we've got some wild ramps they're kind of like onions where yeah. i live that we've been finding yeah i actually cooked with those the other night ours is wild garlic it kind of smells like oh, cool. garlic all in one but yeah it's i've been that's something that this time has also gotten me into is foraging. Like I wanted to learn how to forage. So I got a book because we're down in the woods so much and I'm seeing all these really cool plants. Like I found a plant that smells like root beer. And oh, so cool. I'm trying to investigate what that is. And I don't really know much about plants. I'm not a gardener, although I'm trying because I am have a container garden, garden going. So we're seeing what's going to happen with that. But again, this doesn't have to be a negative time. This can be a really powerful time to like go back to nature. 
and mm. investigate like how can I live closer to the earth and further from modern technology because like having the little what I call the little rectangle in your pocket or in front of your face all day that's what's giving us health issues that's what's giving us anxiety every time you scroll through your feed and you see what everybody else is doing it puts pressure on you well I'm not doing that I need to do that I need to put myself out there a little bit more like that person is but if you're not looking at your feed then you don't know and you don't have that pressure. So it's one less anxiety. You know, I try to re remind people, think back 20, 30 years ago before we had a lot of the technology that we have now. After work, you didn't sit on the couch and watch Netflix and play on your phone. You, you went outside. You sat on the porch with a cool glass of lemonade and watched the world go by. You know, that's yeah. all there was to do. You might have had 10 channels on the TV instead of, you know, every movie at your disposal in the history of mankind. So it's like, if you'll think back, we did really well before all this technology, and now we're sicker than ever with all of it. So the more we go back to nature, the healthier we can become. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. When I was a kid, I, I grew up in the country. We literally we had three channels, and there was like one we kind of got from Canada because I lived in upstate New York, but it was kind of fuzzy. Uh -huh. So three and a half because sometimes you could actually watch it. Sometimes it was it was just too bad. But my closest friend lived like two miles, two three miles away, mm -hmm. and I remember biking to his house, mm -hmm. and we would be outside from sunrise to sun up during the summertime. And that's that's just what we did. And today, kids, they're inside, they're watching TV, they're playing video games, they're on their tablets or, or whatever. And kids are fat, kids are unhealthy. They have diabetes, they have all these allergies, they have cancer. It's just it's really heartbreaking. And uh, you know, hopefully, a lot of children are taking advantage of this and getting outside and pulling themselves away from their their computers too, because it's just as important for our kids as it is for even more important, important for kids as it is for us adults. And it's such an opportunity for learning, not only for, for kids, but also for adults. I mean, but with regard to kids, take your kid outside and get a foraging book and learn together like what this weed in my yard is that actually I, I can eat three different ways, like the dandelion. I had no idea you could eat the dandelion and that you could make tea out of it and things like that. So, and I had no idea that the honeysuckle plant was also known as like a self healer, you know, but all of these things. No, I did not know that. Yeah. And so it's like your kids, yeah, they can't be in school right now, but that doesn't mean they have to stop learning. That doesn't mean they have to be entertained just by the TV, like give them a foraging book and go, okay, go th find outside pages, you know, 10 through 15 or whatever. And it's, it's something fun. It's something that they could find complete interest in and want to, channel their life around even so yeah yeah so it's right i remember my, when my son was about two there was does purslane grow where you live uh, i don't know i haven't heard about that one yeah check it out in your in your foraging book okay. but it's it's super high in omega-3s and it's very nutritious and it was growing up through our patio stones and when my son was before he could even walk maybe he's 18 months he was crawling around on them and I picked some up and I ate it. I'm like, hey, Jay, you, you can eat this. And he ate it. And he was out there a few days later and there were different plants growing up. And he went right to the purse lane and he picked it and he looked at me and I gave him the nod and, and he ate it. But but kids are, they just have this intelligence mm -hmm. about them, right? Just after me showing him once, he knew like which plant he could eat. And we'll be in the yard and I'll pick uh, dandelion greens and give them to him and he eats them. And he eats all that stuff. It's amazing because when I was a little kid, I don't recall liking like bitter things, but um, yeah, it's such a great idea. I'll have, to, I'll have to get a foraging book because I know a few things, but I'm sure there are way more things where I live that I'm not aware of that that I could forage. So what else other than this this root beer and these wild garlic, what else have you been able to forage so far? Um, well, we did some, there was like this plant that I had been actually my husband owns a landscaping business and so another part of this whole quarantine thing is I could go and do jobs with him because we were outside and mm -hmm. I could pull weeds for him and it was it was me being a part of the family business and us spending time together so um, I did that and I was pulling these weeds and I was like wait a second I've seen these and I was looking in the book and they're actually a type of watercress and they're just mm. growing rampant in people's yards. And here I am pulling them out. And I'm like, I could eat this. <laughs> like, um, I forget what it's called. It's kind of um, patient watercress. It's something about patient. Uh, oh, okay. Look it up. Yeah, I love watercress. Awesome. 
But the other thing was, is I had looked and found a book from Henry David Thoreau, which he was a brilliant author way back in the yeah. day. One of his last manuscripts, I'm a big book reader and I like old books. One of his last mm -hmm. manuscripts was called Wild Fruits. And mm -hmm. it all, he wrote this entire book about the seasons and what comes about every season, everything from the maple down to blueberries and all these different, what the fruits come out of each tree and specimen that's out there and plant. And it teaches you what you can eat, what fruits, they might only be available for like two weeks at a time, but there's might be a little speck of fruit that comes out on this certain plant and you can eat it. So it, it was just really oh, cool. neat to see this brilliant author from days gone by that wrote this book that now interests me as well. So I'm learning a lot from Henry David Thoreau too. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah. You'll have to uh, share some pictures of all these uh, cool fruits that you're finding and stuff. I will with you. I'm not on social media anymore, so <laughs> I can't really share them there. Yeah, well, you still, you still have your, your YouTube channel, right? I do do podcasts on YouTube. I've kind of slowed down just at the moment while we're doing all of this because, like I said, again, I'm trying to be less on devices and more out in nature and with my family and stuff. So Yeah, yeah, good for you. Your health drastically improves. You notice it within like a couple days of doing that, like just the stress, those ruminating thoughts in your background are just like, wow, I didn't know that I didn't need this. You know, we're programmed in the society to think that in order to connect with everyone, we have to be social while we're social distancing, but we really don't. We can, we can connect with our local village and the people amidst us. And we can use yeah. technology for things like this when we just absolutely need to connect with someone. But you know, my rule of thumb is if you're going on your phone or your tablet in order to just kind of numb out or go shopping or um, just scrolling through a feed, it's not necessary. What else could you do at that time? What other you know, things are missing behind the rectangle that's happening right now in real life versus seeing what other people, how they're living their life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So important. So how about, has your, has your cooking changed at all? And I know one thing for me, we've been experimenting with some new recipes and definitely have been, been spending more time cooking. We, we normally do cook a lot, but we do we used to go out and, and do takeout too, which we've stopped that a hundred percent. So we're definitely cooking more. Are you guys uh, cooking new things that you haven't necessarily cooked before? Not really. Um, I'm pretty mainstream. You know, we have our five to seven foods that will rotate through any given time, like meals throughout the week. Um, okay. I would say I'm just experimenting with things I'm foraging. Hey, Jodell, I'm losing you. Are you still there? Okay, yeah. I can hear you. So I, I heard you say you were experimenting and then you, I lost you. Yeah. Um, like I'm, I'm just checking to me. So let me know if you can hear me. Okay. You, you're kind, of, you're kind of fading in and out. I can hear you and then I lose you again. Can you hear me now? How about now? Okay. You're coming back. You're coming back. I see the little signal on your computer says you might have one. Could it be yours? Because mine, I'm showing I have like full bars here. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hardwired. Let me do this. Let me um, close close some other windows in the background just in case they're hogging okay. up some bandwidth. Just get what you get. What's that? I heard you get what you get. You said the joys of being live. You just get what you get, right? When you're oh, right. yeah, so true. So true. So and this is for the audience. This is our second <laughs> attempt. The, uh, the first time we, we had some technical difficulties, too. So, yeah, I think that's just one thing with, the, with a lot of people working from home. The streaming is uh, not what it used to be.
Yeah. Yeah. So I think I hear you better now. Maybe. Okay. Hold on one sec. For some reason I, I lost the window. All right, folks, bear with us here. We'll get through it. <laughs> can you still see me and hear me? I can see you. Your picture's not moving, but I can see you. Okay. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. No problem. Sorry uh, for whatever issues we're having. Technology is not our friend sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. So uh, looks like uh, our audio and, and video is both better. So uh, yeah, we're just talking about uh, cooking. Have you experimented with any of the... Uh, foraging you've done, any of the edibles you found? Um, just putting it in a, I do kind of a breakfast scrambler uh, for dinner for my husband. He likes like potatoes and wild sausage and um, eggs. And then, so I chopped up that wild garlic that I'd found and put it in there. Oh, but nice. more, more often I've just, you know, we have the time to like pr almost practice your meal planning. So I've been telling my clients, you know, take the time to get used to prepping meals for the weeks to come and put things together and then have it right in your fridge. I know you're at home, but have it right there to just grab and go. So they kind of get used to that. 
and you can get into the habit of like grab and go and when you get back to work life so yeah that's a great idea so so you were saying before, earlier when we started you talked about how you're uh known to be a very positive person and i remember the last time we spoke you have is it the three p's it's like passion oh pleasure passion purpose yeah vitamin p yeah vitamin p I love that. So I've, I've, how uh, have you been doing taking your vitamin P? I think I'm probably overdosing because <laughs> I've been, you know, working on that trail is such a big mission for me. And then also um, being able to go paddle a little bit more because the weather's getting nicer here. And so we do paddle picnics. My daughter and I will take our lunch out on the paddle board when it's nice. And we'll so we'll Oh, cool. And so, you know, a passion of mine is really instilling good moral values in her. So I kind of ask her a lot of questions to develop her critical thinking because we homeschool. So even before this, she was just with me a lot homeschooling. So it's it's just been nice to instill some some of that. That's what they use in life. They're not going to use much social studies. So, I mean, we do study right. social studies, but I put an emphasis on moral values. So and critical thinking and stuff. So, but yeah, so, yeah. This the vitamin P is really it's something that people can can really focus on now. Something that you're passionate about. Something that brings you pleasure and purpose and meaning to your life. And so. We, we tend to replace vitamin P with a synthetic vitamin P, which is like Netflix mm. or words yeah. with friends or eating, like food can become pleasure and food should taste good, but it shouldn't be the, the end all be all highlight of your day. The highlight of your day should be like that vitamin P, that pleasure, passion and purpose that every day should bring because we don't know if we're guaranteed the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, I just thought of something when you were talking about how you guys homeschool your daughter and a lot of everyone's kids are home now. So people are kind of, I'm sure, experimenting with homeschooling. I'm just curious, like how many people after this are going to be like, you know what? I can do a better job homeschooling my child. They've learned so much more and they've advanced in all these areas from being at home and being away from a place that teaches the opposite of critical thinking. And uh, I just wonder what's going to happen with that. But um, we um, it's something that we have looked into, homeschooling, and may end up doing ourselves. What really inspired you guys to go that route of homeschooling? Oh, that's a loaded question because I had a lot of reasons. You know, I for one, the area that I grew up in, I went to school obviously here, and so I the school was fine, but it wasn't somewhere that I wanted to put my daughter in based on the fact that I had some issues at that school with learning and how I felt like I was held back a little bit. So, and mm -hmm. it could be different today. I'm just saying from my own personal experience. And so I, I wanted to teach her the things that are important in life. I wanted to teach her the things that I actually use. I don't use algebra. So like, I'm sure at some point we'll cover it a little, but I'm not going to make it a mainstay. Um, in, in a lot of the olden times, like the Bible days, you know, Jesus, his father, Joseph, was a carpenter. So his father taught him how to become a carpenter. He didn't have to go mm -hmm. to a trade school or anything. And he was very good at what he did. So it's like you, teaching a child is a parent's job, I feel like. And we yeah. can, like find the easy way out and let somebody else raise them. And then we wonder why we feel disconnected to them. So for me, it's a way to connect with my daughter on a different level. Like I can kind of take off my mom hat and put on my teacher hat and she likes that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a different way for us to have fun together. It's a different way for me to learn with her. Like we're both learning French. She, I'm, I, my oh, cool. cousin, we have FaceTime sessions with my cousin who, who has fluent in French. And so we're both learning together. So I can use the technology. Yeah. I can teach her how, you know, it's it's okay to keep learning even when you're a mom, you know, even when you're an adult, you can still learn. So I I think it's it's it is going to become more mainstream. I think people are starting to see the value in it. Another thing for me was just protection. Like I mean, you and I didn't grow up in a time where we had to worry about school shootings, but a lot of kids now do have to worry about like is somebody going to bring guns to school and yeah. so it was just one last thing if i could have her at home with me and not have that stressor of worrying is she going to be okay today then i'm kind of like a control freak and so that was the way to control the situation and keep her at home with me one less thing to worry about so yeah 
Yeah, that's awesome. It was something I never really looked into that much before having a child. But back in when I was in corporate America, I did have some friends and my chiropractor homeschooled their kids. And I remember them telling me about their children and just how how much more advanced they were than their their peers. And I, all their kids, my chiropractor, both their kids got full scholarships to UVA, which is a top school. And they both got, they went to different schools for grad school. I forget the schools, but they got scholarships for grad school too. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's really sad today. A lot of kids just, they, they leave high school not really prepared even to survive in college, let alone the real world. So it, it seems to be a, a growing trend and people are just taking these matters into their own hands. Yeah. And I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I've never homeschooled before. I'm not a school teacher, like, but it's not, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, yes and no, like, because I want to teach them. I want to teach her the things that I know she's going to need to know, like the very critical values of life, like, you know, budgeting and making a home, like she's going to do those things. So we're definitely focusing on those. And then the other things are more like electives. Like to me, algebra is going to be an elective and like, um, the American history is going to be an elective. I don't use American history every day. It's kind of a cool thing to know, but it's not a mainstay, you know, so I can kind of program it the way I know it's going to benefit her as a human. And my number one priority and what I tell parents is critical thinking, ask them a ton mm. of and let them develop the answers because they inherently know what the answer is, but you have to like kind of let them divulge it out of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's so huge. Learning how to think instead of being told how to think. Told how to think, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ask questions. Yeah, you know, what? Never, always question everything, you know. Yeah, it's so important, it's, especially with today. It's, you know, as we get more and more into the situation that we find ourselves in, you know, now it's very evident that the models they use to base this quarter team are very flawed. Mm -hmm. And there's this narrative that we need a, a vaccine before we can come out and, and live our lives again. And it's it's now more important than ever to have the ability to think for yourselves, mm -hmm. to question things, to do some digging, to do some research and just apply logic and facts to your decision makings instead of just emotions. Yeah, and it's it's so true with these little rectangles we carry around. The more you're on them, they put you in what's that, what you and I've talked about that low dopamine state where you stop asking questions, whatever Facebook tells me is going on. That's what I believe. And that's what I'm going to, I'm going to do what everybody else is doing. And you want to step back and go, why, why are there commercials coming out about staying at home when it takes, I mean, my understanding is it takes two to three months to, to make a commercial. And so did they already know this? Did they already know that we were going to be in this position? So before we even knew that we were going all into lockdown, that they were making commercials about this. So it's like, what, like, take a step back and know that there's been so many types of viruses in the span of time. And if you trace any single one, if we took the time to trace any single one, they'd go around the world just like this one is. So it's like sometimes the media does more for fear than the actual virus is doing. And it's the media is causing more stress than the actual virus is causing stress. And so people need to like step away from the devices that are filling us with fear and step outside and see the earth is regenerating. Like the, the Venice canals are clearer than they ever were. And I've paddled on those. I know how dirty they were. I was forbidden to fall in those so <laughs> for them to be crystal clear. Now that's amazing. And the earth yeah. has the power to regenerate itself. That's huge. That's a beautiful thing. So focus on that instead of the fear that the media puts in us about what's going to happen next. Is there going to be a reoccurrence in the fall? You know? Yeah. Yeah, so true. Yeah, we collectively we all need to to raise our vibration and just step away from the news. No more. <laughs> take a uh, what I call like a news diet. Like take a diet, a detox from the news, and just instead just infiltrate your mind with the beauty that nature is. Because I can't tell you how soothing it is to sit in the middle of the woods and and there's no sound other than the trees blowing and little creatures crawling around. I mean, there's something really powerful to that. Yeah. Yeah. So some of my best memories from this time are family hikes yeah. through the woods because we've never done this much hiking <laughs> and the, the weather's just starting to get nice. 
we actually would we would have done a lot more hiking if it hasn't been raining so much right but every time we've had a, a nice sunny day especially on a weekend we go for a hike and it's just so great seeing my son immersed in the forest and his curiosity and just kind of running around and giggling and laughing and it's uh it's it's, it's really amazing so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what you were saying about the the green odor, I think you called it. Yeah, green odor. It's kind of, it's kind of a funny term. Yeah. Well, actually, it, it makes sense because from my understanding of essential oils, when you're hiking in the woods, essential oils come out of the trees. There are molecules floating in the air, so you're breathing in these essential oils, which is even more powerful than any diffuser in your house could do. So it's like natural nature's aromatherapy. Yeah, especially this time of year with everything coming in, in the bloom. It's just as you're walking through, there's just such a variety of, of smells. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, that's so meditative in and of itself. Like I, I was clearing the path on the hiking trail and there was a cedar tree that was dead. And so I was pulling branches off and every branch I pulled off, I smelled the cedar. And I was like taken back to childhood when we had like this cedar chest that I stored all my toys in. Like it's just a really beautiful thing to take take smells into. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have a, a meditation that's called 54321, and you go through all your five senses. So mm. what are five things that you see? What are four things that you hear? What are three things that you feel? What are two things that you smell? What's one thing that you're tasting? You know, And you go through this whole, and it ignites your senses, but it also calms that parasympathetic response down. Yeah, cool, I love that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, good. Well, Jodell, is there anything else you want to share? Um, you know, just the fact that we're living in critical times and sometimes they're hard to deal with. And but we don't have to just stay inside to deal with them. Like we've been talking outside is a powerful way. Grounding, putting your feet on the earth is a powerful way to like lower anxiety. So mm. the one tip people might try is to just go out and either sit on the ground with a blanket if you're kind of afraid of the bugs or something like that, or just go put your feet on the ground on a soft um, area, grassy area, or anywhere that's comfortable for you to just take a moment. No, don't take your device. Just go outside and sit and maybe take the, a moment to watch the clouds go by. We don't do that enough. And again, that's something that will calm that nervous system down like you wouldn't believe. Just five minutes after watching the clouds go by or laying on a blanket in the grass, mm. really powerful to your nervous system and just to your day. It just kind of gives a little dose of vitamin P in your day. Yeah, I love that. Awesome, awesome tip. So, Jodell, what's your website? I know you, you have a website, YouTube. Where can people find you? Yeah, so getfitwithjodell.com, and then my YouTube is Jodell Fit, F-I-T, J-O-D-E-L-L-E-F-I-T. Um, and I, ha I have lots of different interesting podcasts with different doctors and researchers. Um, yeah. Taking a little break right now, but I'll be back to do some more soon. Hopefully I can get you on my podcast again soon, too. Yeah, and, be awesome. Uh, I also am on the weight room. I manage a gym here in town as well. And so the weight room and fitness studios on YouTube, you can check out some workout videos there. And I do something oh, cool. called Calm Fit, which is kind of a way to move your body, but keep calm because a lot of people do a lot of heavy, intense workouts. And so sometimes less is more and you'll actually get more benefits from doing more calming practices than you will heavy, intense, high intensity training stuff. So. Mm. Yeah, and you were saying that that your gym is going to open with some outdoor activities. Is that what you were yeah. telling me when we spoke the other day? Yeah, thankfully, my, the owner and I are big outdoor enthusiasts, so we've kind of put together what we call the pit, and the pit is going to have like a lot of like kind of like an adult playground, and so people can ground. They can be barefoot. They can mm. be out on monkey bars and pull up bars, but also some interesting like tire flip equipment and stuff, and. So yeah, just a way to get outside and get sunlight for people coming to the gym. Because I think gyms should be outside, but you know you have to appease the masses. A lot of people like the whole like indoor gym thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's so important. And you just you kind of reminded me when you were talking before about building your trail and hiking. Like that's how people evolved: walking on uneven ground and hills and valleys and going over rocks. And it's like, you know, my gym. There, I've been going there five years. And there are people that I recognize from five years ago when I started, and they're just as fat. 
and I'll see them like on the tread when I'm there, they do the treadmill. It'll be a beautiful day outside and they're walking on the treadmill. Like, no, get your ass outside and then connect with nature. Walk over like uneven ground. But that's uh I'm I'm sure people are just gonna notice such a difference working out outdoors versus indoors because you've got recycled air indoors, you've got bad lighting, you don't have the sun. And uh aspects of my gym I do miss. I definitely miss the sauna. But I've been doing my kettlebell outside, and all it takes is a couple of kettlebell swings. It might be 30 degrees outside, and you're warmed up. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm also, if anybody can find the book, it's really cool, but there's a book from 1903 called Return to Nature. Mm. And I'm reading that as well, and it's really ahead of its time because it's talking about the benefits of cold air exposure, kind of like what's kind of mainstream right now. But yeah. Uh, the author Adolf Just talks about um, the benefits. The UST. Yeah, like just like it's just okay. or whatever. Um, but yeah, the, he talks about the benefits of uh, way more benefits of cold water and cold air exposure than you know taking a hot shower or t or being out in the heat. Like he's all about the cold exposure, and it it helps our nervous system develop better. It makes us stronger humans to be in the cold. And if we think about it, before hot water invented was invented. If you lived somewhere, you bathed in a creek and it was cold, it was not warm, and you didn't stay in it very long. You got in long enough to clean yourself and then you got out. Right. So, I mean, it's it's from 1903, and so it's, it's just so powerful about how he talks about you need to go barefoot, you need to, because I guess that was the start of the Industrial Revolution at that time, and he was mm. trying to stop that. He was trying to remind people, no, humans are made for the earth, like, be outside, be barefoot, take light and air baths where you're naked outside, so... Yeah, that's yeah. So Adolf just what's the name of the book again? Return to Nature. It was Return really hard to, for me to find, but I did find it when I had heard about it. It's a it's one of my most favorite books now. I'm going to read it over and over. So right, yeah, I love that Return to Nature. That actually reminds me of a book that I've been reading that I just finished over break is uh, Papillon, which is a true story of this guy um, Henry Char. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name Charrier, but he was sent to Devil's Island in uh, French Guiana, and it was like one of the most dreaded prisons in the world. And uh, he had all these escaped attempts. He finally escaped, but one of his punishments for one of his failed escapes was being put in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of the men, in, actually everyone in solitary confinement got scurvy. So they started giving the men I think it was like an hour outside each day. And he said within a week, all these men, they looked like zombies. They came back to life just from that, that one hour of sun a day. But if you think about it, most people choose to be almost living in solitary confinement. You might be with other people, but you're confined to your home without that natural light. Yeah. So it's, it's just really interesting that he was talking about the benefits of sunlight. This was in 1930, so a little bit after Adolf Just, but there was another time where he ended up in Venezuela and the people there, they were very poor, but they were very just amazing, wonderful people. And they were kind of almost apologizing to him, you know, we're sorry, we don't have more and we're not more advanced because they knew he was from Paris. And he said, actually all the technology of France has made the French people weak. Mm. This was in 1930. Yeah. We think about the technology in 1930 versus today. And he said, he just said, there's just, I forget the words he used, but something like magical about you, you know, you guys because of your connection to the earth still. So it was just really interesting that he made those observations then. Yeah. So you know, going back a hundred years, people are just like, ah, oh, you know, this technology, it's, it's no good. You got, got to get outside. So it hasn't changed. We can survive without it. We did for many, many years. So it's not like we have to be on a device every day. It's not like you can't put it on airplane mode and check all your messages later and go out and enjoy the woods and stuff like that. I mean, they'll always be there. They still come through. So <laughs> I, I'm not that easy to get a hold of. My husband doesn't like it very much, but he knows eventually I'll return his call. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Well, good for you. So, guys, check out Jodell's website. Check out her YouTube channel. 
check out. I'll uh, send me the links, Jodell. I'll, I'll put them under this YouTube video. And uh, yeah, you can check out her gym videos too for some outdoor workouts. And uh, anything else before we part ways? No, I think that's that's it's been really fun. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's always great connecting. And uh, keep on, uh, you know, in overdosing on on your three Ps. Will do. All right, Jodell. Take care.